Hello and welcome back. <clears throat> Today I was meant to be working on this Dream Big panel, which I will do shortly, uh, but not today. I was not able to get my ducks in a row for this week's video. I got most of them in a row, but I had a couple uncooperative ducks. So I'm going to go ahead and change this out and show you what we are going to get done today. And it'll be a good welcome home for all of us. Well, I've switched gears and I'm going to go ahead and do this welcome home banner. Uh, one thing is that I had all of the items in stock and uh, ready to go. I dipped into my own uh, fabric stash and pulled out all three of these are probably at least 15 years old. One of the things I did was for the main fabric, I used the back side of it. You can see that the difference between the front and the back of the fabric. And the reason I did that was because the back side was a little bit lighter, but it still had some of the same coloring in it. Um, and I wanted my applique components to really pop on the background. So um, that's why I used the back on the uh, backing fabric. And one thing I always try and remember is that value does all the work, but color gets all the credit. So I always try and keep value in mind when I'm choosing fabric, uh, fabric for a project. On the border, I had this really beautiful bright border stripe. And the way I chose the amount of border for here was that I just measured the distance between the reoccurring stripe. In my case, it was a little more than three inches, but I wasn't going to be cutting uh, weird fractions uh, with the ruler. So I just went ahead and cut three inch strips for that. I also didn't want to have to miter the corner today because I wanted simple, so I just used uh, green from the same uh, fabric line for the cornerstones. That made it really simple. What I like to do when I am doing cornerstones, I can cut all my fabric at once. Once I cut the main body of the quilt, I cut the length strips the exact same length as the, uh, pad, the piece and I do the same with the top and then I just cut the cornerstone square whatever the width was because with the seam allowance these are both going to have seam allowance taken off of them so they all four of these strips were the same length as the side that it was uh, sewn onto so I don't have to do anything uh, fancy with the uh, measuring on that it's just whatever size I cut this length that's what size these are whatever size width I cut the background that's what size these strips are so it's very simple to get that uh, cut up and going. Another thing that I did, uh, and I always do, is especially on larger pieces like this, I always iron my paper pattern because we have to fold it to get it into the package, obviously. And I don't want that fold distortion lifting up as I'm putting my pieces in and have something be off a little bit. It's not going to be awful lot, but it's just something I like to do. It makes it easier to work with, and um, I, that way I know everything is going to line up the way it should. Also, because this piece is a little bit longer than my light table, what I'm going to do to get it ready is flip my uh, quilt piece over, and you can see it's brighter on the back. And I'm going to tape this in place with regular uh, magic tape. Uh, you could use painter's tape or whatever you wanted. I'm not going to iron over that at any time, so I'm not worried about it coming back off. I'm just going to go ahead and center it, tape it to the fabric. That way, as I move the quilt top to get the light underneath the pattern, I won't be uh, dislocating where the paper was to begin with. So I'm going to go ahead and get that taped on and get my components spread out and we can get started layering this beautiful welcome home banner. All of our kits come with instructions that give you a step-by-step -step, uh, method to get the uh, placement on each of the items, tells you how the process works and it's very easy to do. Uh, so our, there's instructions with every one of our kits and I have the pattern ironed. I have it taped to the back of my fabric so when I move the fabric the pattern is going to move with it 
And what I'm going to do to start is to get the furthest back pieces in place. And in this case, it's going to be the stand for the birdhouse. And one thing I forgot to grab was a little pin. But at this point, I have everything laid out in an approximate place to where it's going to go in the end. And I like to do that just to make sure I don't have any missing pieces. A missing piece is absolutely humanly possible, but it's easily correctable. Um, all you have to do with these, and I'm going to do this whole thing in real time just so you can see how fast it goes, is to peel the paper backing off of these laser cut components. And anywhere there's a dotted line on the pattern, you know that's where the fabric piece will go underneath something. And up here, at the top of the birdhouse, you can see that the birdhouse is going to go over top of this uh, post. So I think the next thing I'm going to do is move some of these little pieces out of the way and then I can get my house going because that's going to be a pretty big chunk. And for the most part, this paper is just going to peel right away from the back. We have Steamacine 2 already fused onto the back of all these pieces and you can see it's tacky to the touch. If for any reason you peel the paper up and the Steamacine is still stuck to the paper and not the fabric, um, just lay the paper back down and uh, run your iron over this for about 10 seconds and that will refuse the Steamacine 2 to the fabric. We do have to attach all of this steam seam to the fabric for you. So, of course, at some part of the process, there's going to be a piece that doesn't fuse properly. Uh, not because the steam seam failed, but because human error. Doesn't happen very often. I think I've only had it happen once or twice uh, since I've been using this product. The nice thing about the steam seam, too, is that this is now um, temporarily in place because the steam seam 2 is tacky uh, but if I needed to I could peel this back up and put something underneath it if I got the, uh, the layers wrong which you know which one went on top of which so I'm just going to continue along many of these pieces are going to be fairly simple to get off but one thing I like to do is have something on standby in this case I have a pretty large pin and if one of the pieces was being finicky I could just score the back of the paper and that gives me something to open up and peel off also I can tell you with a really delicate piece sometimes you don't want to keep fussing with the edge because you don't want to fray it and with the uh, pin because you're working in the center of the piece it's a good way to protect the edges just like on this beautiful circle you don't want to have frayed the circle now I can see through here the placement of that but if you had any trouble you could always lift up the fabric a little bit now I have the base of the birdhouse I know we just got into the new year, but uh, I really needed something lighthearted and fun to do. And this bright quilt really hit the spot today. Some days, ooh, some days it just doesn't pay to watch the news. I always have to pay particular attention to this flower because of its shape and it seems like I'm always wanting to get it put on in the wrong direction and I'm going to swear 
that I did it again. But this is why that repositionable uh, steam seam 2 is, is so great. Even with that, one, two, three small ones. I'm going to have to peel that up. I always do that with these flowers. Three. Maybe I'm using the wrong one. That would explain it. <laughs> well, if that's not exactly in the right place, it won't be the first time. I was going to try and blame it on it being upside down, but the pattern isn't actually upside down today. I have it right side up, which foils my anything that I can blame my mistakes on. This is another piece that's really uh, small and delicate, and so I really try and be careful with how I peel the paper off, because I don't want to fray the edge. Let's see if the, is this dot goes up here. That one go, went on a little bit easier to save my pride. I don't know. I've been quilting for 31 years. I don't know too many other things that are this bright and cheerful and this easy to do. I mean this literally will be done in just a few minutes. I will say this again later, but whenever we use Steam Seam 2, we do have to use moisture in the process of the fusing. So I often will use a spritz bottle because I don't always like to have steam in my iron because I find that the uh, iron lasts longer without having water in it. I'm sure you've all seen a leaky iron. So that's why I use the spritz bottle. But uh, you also could use uh, steam from the iron if that's what uh, you're used to doing. But you do have to use steam of some sort when fusing it to make the uh, process work. It is called steam a seam too. Uh, steam is a, a required component of the fusing process. Let's see, time for some bird legs. I 
can't tell for sure if that flower is in exactly the right place, but I'm sure this bird won't mind as long as he has some place to land. And I don't want my bird to be bow-legged either. So I'm going to attempt to get them on straight. I think this would easily be the type of project that you could have your grandson or granddaughter help you with. Um, I don't think I would let them do the ironing part of it, but that would depend on their age. But this is certainly a, a kid-friendly type project. They could certainly peel the uh, paper backing off with their little fingers with no problem I would say this is always another little tricky one is to get this little beak the little bird beak right in the right position mine sometimes will go off a little cockamamie We've just just about got the top half finished getting all these in place. And as I said before, all of these pieces are repositionable. So if um, I made a mistake, I could correct it. If you made a mistake, you could correct it all the way up until the point where we fuse this in place. I'm going to go ahead and get these letters on because that will be fairly simple. We have lettering with quite a few of our little applique designs. And, you know, obviously you could put this on or not put it on. It's up to you. I suppose if you had an embroidery module, you could complicate things and embroider something on there yourself. We also do not top stitch any of our samples around the edges of the applique. If you bond the uh, fusible properly in the ironing process, all of these pieces are permanent. They can be washed. We have samples when we do shows that have been washed over a dozen times. Some of the edges will uh, create a little bit of a soft edge, but if you machine zigzag or machine satin stitch or a buttonhole stitch around every edge, you're going to get some fraying on that as well. So you kind of come around to the same point uh, one way or the other. And just like that, we have some lettering. Now we will do some more flowers. On that top flower, I did them from the outside, from one edge around. And now I can see that I have to go back and change that because I didn't do it right. but it's fine because I haven't ironed it yet so I can just reposition just take me a, a minute to do it I don't know I hope this is a little bit more entertaining than watching paint dry I never know from my side. I don't think you're ever going to catch me doing this live. I have enough mistakes when I tape it. So, don't count on a live adventure.
Okay, I'm going to get some leaves down. The leaves will go pretty quick. There's not much ambiguity as to where those go. This would be a great gift if somebody had just moved into a new house. It would be a great housewarming gift. I think it would be a great gift for uh, a new couple that just got married. I think it will look pretty. I have an enclosed front porch. I think it would be pretty on the porch. Just as you open the porch door and come into the porch to have this hanging there. I could see from my little dotted line here where that's supposed to start. There we go. That looks a little better. Now we have some little bird feathers for our bird tail. I'm going to go back up and put those in place. I never got the center of this flower, which I think I am just going to leave where it is. even if it's off a little bit. We do have a really beautiful catalog that has uh, all of our applique in it. Um, I don't have a copy of the newest one. I just have the last one we put out. This is the last one we put out. You can uh, at, uh, order that. There's a small charge for that, but we have that available. Um, and I am using the cover page to make sure that I get my flowers in the right place. Because I suspect that it's very important which one goes where. Really what I think is that it doesn't match. Because I can never get these to work. I suspect that those are in the wrong place. But I'm not going to fight with it anymore. Okay, I have another bird. I am getting down to the bottom here. I do appreciate your patience while I do this and I appreciate all the people 
to continue to watch the videos. It makes it uh, encouraging to keep trying to come up with new videos for everyone to watch. We enjoy sharing the product with you, that's for sure. I know I miss seeing people in person, but that just isn't possible right now. So we're enjoying this way of communicating with people. I always try and play a little bit with the placement of the little eyeball. The eyeball is kind of like ultra suede and so it takes um, an additional second or two to get that fuse down for the heat to go through there. Whenever I do fuse, once I finish with the front, then I also try and fuse uh, from the back side just to make sure that some of these compound pieces that have multiple layers that the heat actually gets through all of the layers. If you fuse it properly from the start, then you won't have any problem with any of the pieces lifting up. If you're getting gumming on your needle, if you are quilting it, uh, or if you're top stitching and you're getting gumming on the needle, that's an indication that you have not fused long enough to begin with and you can go back and refuse. So, what do I have left? I have the one flower. Didn't I peel the back off of one of those? I guess I did not. I may have one of these flowers in the wrong place, but I would appreciate it no one telling on me. Okay, we're getting to the very end. We've got a few flower circles to put on. Before I fuse off camera, I'm going to look and see if I've made a mistake with these three flowers at the bottom, but then I will get to uh, turning my iron on, which I have not done yet, and getting this ready to fuse. At that point, since all of these pieces are uh, stuck to the fabric temporarily, I can turn this over and peel my paper off, because I don't need to iron the paper again. And I think this is my last piece. So, as you can see, the pieces are uh, temporarily stuck in place, so I can go ahead and peel my paper off. I'm going to check these couple flowers to make sure I have them in the right place, because this one isn't looking right, and I may readjust the leaves. Then I'll get my iron set up and we can fuse this and we'll be... Well, I have my piece laid out. I've got all of the components where I need them. I readjusted this a little bit to make it a little bit more pleasing. I'm not sure how I messed that up, but I'm sure I did it somehow. Oh, and I haven't checked this one yet. I was going to readjust these. Or I fused.
So I'm going to go ahead and mist my pieces. And another thing I'm going to do is lay over top a pressing cloth. The pressing cloth uh, traps in that steam, but it also does something else for me because uh, every once in a while I'm a little bit lazy and I don't lift up the iron. And as I'm rubbing across, I might lift up one of the edges of the applique pieces, which I don't want to do. So the pressing cloth helps keep all of the components flat as I'm applying heat to the product. And that way I am not crimping any of the edges. And this part of the process is not that exciting, so I'm not going to make you watch me do the whole thing. But I am going to go ahead and uh, fuse all of this, every space that will fit under the iron. And then after I'm finished, I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to iron it again with a little bit of steam or the mister from the back just to make sure that I get everything really, really fused. There's no way you can overfuse the steam of seam two. You'd burn the fabric before you ever uh, damage the steam of seam two. So you don't have to worry about that. Well, here you go. Another really beautiful design from Applique Elements. Uh, you can see that it did take me a, a few minutes to get the pieces right, but this is uh, by no means a slow project. It goes very quickly. You could easily have your kids help with this. It would be a great gift for home warming or for a newlywed couple. Also, our patterns, uh, many or most of the patterns are available as just a paper pattern. If you wanted to just do a hand turn applique, we also have many, many of our designs are available as SVG files, a uh, scalable vector graphic, which means that you could download the design from our website and use them with a brother scan and cut or a cameo silhouette. They are available for purchase just the way that the uh, kit with the fabric is. Uh, so you can get them three different ways, paper pattern, SVG file, or with the uh, fabric and uh, fusible web. Again, this already has the pattern with it, so if you wanted to reproduce it again later with your own fabric using the traditional method of uh, cutting, and cutting the fa fabric out yourself, you could surely do that. So um, if you would like, you could uh, visit our website at www.urbanelements.com and you could look at all of the applique patterns that we have or you could order a catalog for a small fee and we'll ship you the current catalog with all the new designs. So thanks for stopping by and hopefully next time you see me I'll be doing a Dream Big panel.